talk about this as England's best chance ever. Yes, and obviously they realise it as well. England have virtually chosen the side that everybody wanted to play for England. I wonder whether that experience can be put into realisation today because they've got a big task ahead of them. And how important the line-out. That one won by Gary Braid, hoisted by Donald. Back there is Carlton. Nicely placed kick. Close to England's goal line. And this line-out battle, which Scotland was so successful in a week ago, surely a vital facet to this game. England with Holclough and Bainbridge. But it's New Zealand with the throw-in through Hicker Reid. Long for Mexted, goes through to Hobbs on England's line. And held up long enough to keep New Zealand out. The first scrummage of the match, and it'll be a defensive put in. Nick Young's just his second international, this uh, young Leicester lad with his club partner today, Les Cosworth. First scrummage. Good heat by New Zealand. Donald ran to spoil. It's there for sure, but offside. And what relief in that opening onslaught that must bring to England. Peter Wheeler there, the captain, leaves it for Dusty Hare. Yes, and that's the English experience showing in the scrummage. Though they were under a lot of pressure from that initial shove by the All Blacks, uh, John Scott didn't panic and he stayed down and uh, the pack virtually nullified one another and caught the New Zealanders offside. A bit of a slice from uh, Dusty, but safely away. It gives New Zealand the throw-in, though, and they've cut their line out to just two and there's an interesting duel Mexted and Scott switch the variation nicely done down to Craig Green to set it up on to Gary Braid 10 meters out available for Donald Wayne Smith held by Cosworth closer though the drive by the All Blacks Hobbs Donald Craig Green Back goes Slemon. Across there is Robbie Deans. Slemon puts it away. But in the meantime, some obstruction has given New Zealand a penalty close to the England posts. Alan Hosey had allowed advantage to continue, had seen obstruction and has given the award of the penalty to New Zealand and surely the simplest of kicks for Robbie Deans. Precisely the type of uh, start that any visiting side would uh, like to have. But of course, New Zealand do obviously uh, come into this match probably for the first time, not as favourites, will be keen to show that they've uh, lost none of their ways as far as winning is concerned. And uh, we'll be delighted to have had this very early opportunity because to go back to the point we raised earlier, it's a very experienced English side. And there's uh, Gary Pierce requiring attention for a cut and having to leave the field. Hopefully just for the moment. Don Gatherer there giving some speedy attention as England wait apprehensively behind their own goal line. And this, the chance for Robbie Deans. So long reserved to Alan Hewson record point scorer in New Zealand rugby last year three penalties two conversions against Scotland and within uh, four minutes of the start a chance to put New Zealand ahead Deans safely home but probably what was far more ominous than that three points was the way in which the All Blacks kept control of that loose ball and made the ball available on two or three occasions for the scrum half, which shows that what such a good uh, ball-winning combination they are. Well, the uh, shades of the fourth test at uh, Eden Park against the Lions, the spirit with which this New Zealand side started off this match. Young they may be, but uh, rugby's in the blood and determination there, apparently. Dodge, that favoured England style, switched up, over the dead ball line, and the drop out. Perfect conditions, a bit chill for the hands, but uh, players will be warm enough soon enough. 
five minutes played. And the referee allows Gary Pierce to return happily for England. Just a bit of strapping. Back to full strength. Then. Simpson, first touch of the ball in international rugby for him, but it's Hobbs that wins it back to Donald Wayne Smith. Cross comes Hare. Outside the 22. Not much else he could do than that. Justin Hare's 19th. International equaling the record as the most capped England fullback of Bob Hiller. Two man line again. Gary Braid, nice variation. Wayne Smith, Green misses out the carry. Dean's in the line trying to find Wilson, shadowed by Slemon. Wilson now ducks the head up to the 22. Hickory. Tremendous power. Mexted in support. And the hand helped it back after the tackle to the relief of England and the uh, mobility of Hicker Reed and the strength what an outstanding tour he's had shown to the full then just the half a touch to calm things down England not yet allowed to settle at all ten minutes have passed already just the one penalty by Ruby Deans Keeps New Zealand in the lead. Braid at the front with McGratton. Donald held in, but line-out throw not to the referee's satisfaction. Alan Hosey with that uh, great depth of experience of international rugby. Youngs with the feed. Into the box for Slemon to chase. Stu Wilson waits. And the harassing worked. Well, bidding uh, to make this a glorious finale to his international career, as so he avows, captain of the All Blacks. Five metres outside the All Blacks 22. The player turned and the ball fed back. Away by Wayne Smith. Wayne Smith, who contested two of the test matches against the British Isles last summer, was eighth international now, one of the five players from the Canterbury province, the reigning New Zealand champions. Scott, but no, Mexted won it. Ryan was McGratton. Not yet the line-out supremacy and evidence that England had held in great hope. I'm sure that the New Zealanders have also learned from last week's match against Scotland where they were outplayed in that department by the Scottish forwards. Mixted for once robbed by Youngs. Wayne Smith on the retreat. And New Zealand this time obstruct. And England get the penalty. So interfering with play in an offside position and that allows England a first real chance of points through Dusty Hare. The uh, hold-up is for an injury to Sraiton, the Maori prop forward we saw over here on Wales tour. It is interesting to note the, the All Blacks being caught offside there because I think that this side, because of their inexperience, are giving other, uh, opposition, the opposition far more penalty opportunities that, uh, than any All Black side tends to do. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see whether or not they carry on where they left off against Scotland and present Dusty Air with the same opportunities. England's record point scorer, 45 international penalty goals. And a man, of course, whose penalty and drop goal helped the Midlands to that historic victory early in the tour. The farmer from Newark. 
chance to level the scores. He knows this ground. All square then, 14 minutes played. Drop out by Wayne Smith. Tap back by Gary Braid. Donald. Craig Green almost charged down by Winterbottom. Scott gathers it in as England set it up just outside the 22. Good work by White. Youngs to Simpson, the other new cap. Youngs struggling to get it away. Cusworth upended by Green. And New Zealand are offside. In front of their own posts. And those telltale signs of inexperience. And when you'll recall how they denied Ollie Campbell, even a kick at goal in the last three tests in New Zealand. We're now seeing errors which can be put down to inexperience. So here, his easiest chance yet. Can England go ahead? Just prior to that uh, penalty that uh, New Zealand gave away, I was rather surprised that uh, England still tried to keep the ball rather tight. They'd set up one or two good uh, positions from which the loose ball could have been uh, allowed to go out through the back line. The back line has been chosen for a little bit of running, and as yet, with almost half the first half having gone, we've hardly seen the ball move further than Kesworth. Yes, 19 minutes played. England lead six points to three. Yeah, make sure that Steve Picari runs the full distance before dashing it down for the dropout. England's game plan, one of no great enterprise, no frills to be included. Bidding to play down into New Zealand's half. Murray Davy in the forefront. And they pile up the ball forward. Youngs, 10 metres outside the England 22, controlled by Scott, trying to catch New Zealand offside, and it's worked. from Dusty Hare. Well, there's a player who had, I think, the uh, odd point to prove today, travelled with the Lions without getting into the test side, but has this third chance to down New Zealand for England. One of the members of the side in both 1978 and 79 here at Twickenham. When, like so often before, England lost on each occasion. Jock Hobbs. Gratton setting it up. Colin White on that loose head side. And what a game for a debut. Away by Robbie Deans. England, in fact, have been uh, penalised for coming through offside. Variation of tactic, Andy Donald with the bomb, as they call it in New Zealand. The Gary Owen, beautifully taken by Hobbs. Donald in position, flicks through to Shaw. Mexted, great tackle by Slemon. And it's won by the England pack to Youngs, Cusworth. The crowd willing him then to pass it out, but hoists another ball. And Wilson, he'll be angry with that. Slemon, back on his feet, took quite a blow then, but he did fell Murray Mixted in full flight.
New Zealand's 22. Young's club partner, Cusworth, looks for the drop goal. Will it carry? Just on the left. Referee Alan Hosey followed it every inch of that tantalising journey, but left of the post. Quick restart by Wayne Smith, charged down by Peter Wheeler, recovered by Slemon. Up on the 22, to Scott, Bainbridge. Useful chip for Carlton, not quite bending his way. And England with their tails up. Twenty-three minutes of the first half. And England looking livelier, more confident. The early nerves seem to have dissipated. Picker Reed with the throw. Almost got it on the return. Young's good work. Strong. Pierce to Simpson. Nicely played too by Bainbridge. From White, Young's Simpson. Still in possession. Seven metres out. Young's, Cosworth, Dodge, held by Hobbs and Smith. And again the forwards win it. Cosworth, looking to make a gap, hesitated and uh, that was long enough for New Zealand to sort him out. Well, that's a very cautious approach by England, isn't it? They're playing that blind side uh, all the time, obviously playing to uh, tactics, Nick Young's. But um, possibly they don't want to give New Zealand a chance to knock them down in midfield and create something from that loose possession. Exactly the plan, I think, Gareth. Deflected by Braid, Hobbs, Donald. Do you see the speed of that flick to Wayne Smith that gave him room and time? But there's aggression, determination in this England performance, which somehow seemed lacking in last season's efforts. Not so clever that time. Wayne Smith to Green. The loop for Hobbs. Smith still on his feet and away. Wayne Smith, the fly half. England's 10 metre line. And Donald looking for that chance with Mexted in support. Albie Anderson to Mark Shaw. Good tackle came in there from Gary Pearce, but the pack have won it back for New Zealand. Green up the centre. Hicker Reed. Well, that's the way he always goes. But the pack for England have regrouped. Cusworth is there. Tactically, this game is very, very interesting. Dick Greenwood and obviously Peter Wheeler must be very confident that they can take this uh, All Black pack uh, apart for, probably later on. But the interesting thing is, is that Nick Youngs is keeping it very, very tight so that he can keep that New Zealand back row very close in. Don't allow them to fly out knocking the centres down in midfield. And this, of course, is curtailing the All Black uh, power. And perhaps the significant statistic there is 75 caps for England's front five as opposed to... 13 for the All Blacks and England's pack have set it up again. Dodge meant that to travel further forward. Wilson caught by Winterbottom. Mexted. Slemon. Well, it was a fine, quick thinking tackle by Robbie Deans. As Slemon looked almost away and through on that interception. Thirty-two minutes played, two penalties to one, England's three-point lead. Just outside New Zealand's 22. Scott and Mexley again in that personal battle, reenacting what happened in 79. Certainly the lessons learned from the Midlands division victory very much in evidence here in England's pattern of play. Too long. Barring disaster, 
Well, none too tidy in defence, but safe enough. Wayne Smith. Colclough, like a rock. But uh, Nick Young's let it slip. Referee playing advantage from the knock-on. Mark Shaw there, cowboy they call him. And certainly not a man to uh, mix it with. Albie Anderson behind uh, Morris Colclough, characteristic pose. Of course, playing so much of his club rugby in France, but now back with the Wasps Club during such a good season. That was back from Gary Braid. And uh, did New Zealand ever have such a youthful pairing in the powerhouse of the second row? The 23-year-old Gary Braid, 22-year-old Albie Anderson. Safely. Second surge by the England pack call for Shaw. Given offside, the referee lets advantage run, and Youngs takes advantage. Inside meant for Winterbottom. Bernie Fraser gets in the way. Fly hacks almost desperately downfield. Carlton, and that was typically aggressive Bernard Fraser. Flying in, not really seeming to care what was at stake. And one seen the odd... Uh, aggressive moment from Fraser on this tour which has caused me to wince a little that was highly dangerous a leap and a fly into John Carlton and Bernie Fraser came flying down at Carlton and took off and really seemed just intent on burying the man the end result, and a very sad one, is the injury to John Carlton, who's already had his fair share of injuries this season and uh, left the field against Canada in the preliminary international. And I personally feel that uh, Fraser's intention was all too clear. He certainly went in high, perhaps not as he intended, but to down Carlton some way or another looked to be what Fraser was about. So Carlton leaves the field. Dodge with the penalty resulting from it. Steve Bainbridge, middle of the line. But Albie Anderson. So a man advantage for New Zealand with Peter Winterbottom standing out in Carlton's place. We're down to the last three minutes of this half, plus uh, some little injury time to add on. England staying ahead. Fascinating dual tactical game between these two sides the two second rows combining well Young setting it up and on the wrong side are the Blacks conceding the penalty on their 10 metre line and the chance for Dusty Hare to make that a clear six point England lead And so Nick Stringer gets his chance as replacement. His previous international appearance was as replacement for England's other winger today, Mike Slemmer. In the meantime, there's the angle and distance for Dusty Hare. Sweetly struck, but just to the right.
So with just a couple of minutes of this half to go, that slender lead, two nasty hair penalties to one by Robbie Deans, and only three points between them. Colin White, Young's long feet to Cusworth, Dodge, Leicester Triumvirate, and again, no willingness to run it down the three-quarter line, but to set it up as England have done again. John Scott to the four of things, Young, Simpson, Cusworth, Stringer, just a half metre short. Bernie Fraser trying to force it out of defence and into touch as he does. New Zealand feeling the pressure that so many England sides have felt from them in the past. What a roar of support from the crowd. As Gary Pierce waits alongside Brian McGratton. England's throw from Wheeler. Four minutes out. Bainbridge, but it deflected down to the arms of McGratton. The referee has uh, blown for a scrummage. I am fortunate for England. There have been too many of those lineouts where Cambridge has got his hands to the ball only to lose it uh, at a crucial moment. England, of course, playing a very controlled uh, first half tying up that uh, back row of New Zealand and as we saw there only releasing the ball at the very last moment when that back row have been sucked in and uh, Stringer almost uh, scored with the very first touch of the ball and was only dropped a yard or so from the line but as we've got an injury here to John Scott who obviously went down there into that loose ruck situation where the All Blacks don't take any prisoners A lot of wheeling and uh, crabbing in that scrummage. Donald fires it back to Smith. So England, as we move into injury time, bidding for another score before the break. Bainbridge didn't uh, get hold of that one cleanly. Stamping by New Zealand. And a clear indication on the far side of the ruck there, the finger appeared to point at McGratton it was either him or Hobbs, it was uh, not altogether clear, but one of those two stamped in front of the referee. And so a penalty chance for Dusty Hare. Two successful, two missed penalties so far. Curls left. And the chance misses, the percentage not of the usual Hair high standing. New Zealand looked for the chance of the quick restart to catch England unawares, but uh, think twice. Shaw still gets it away despite the tackle of Youngs to McGratton. Mexted takes on the whole England pack. No one's better equipped to do so. But England have won it. Youngs, Cusworth, Dodge, Woodward, Slemon. First run. Donald gets the inside kick. The pressure still on, though, from Slemon forces him to put it out from behind the place at which he kicked it. But England would have been hoping that this last quarter of an hour of pressure would have produced further points. The last score was 18 minutes into the game. They've had the lion's share 
of this second quarter of the match, but still the score stays the same. McGratton, that's no useful, no back clearance for a prop forward, my word. Well, there's a former New Zealand Colt who has, in fact, kicked the last play of this half. Well, I wonder at times whether the cr criticisms of British rugby that we saw in the preview to this match from Bryce Rope that uh, we do seem to starve our talented runners, Gareth Edwards. Um, do you think this is what we're seeing today when there's been plenty of possession about? Well, it's obviously a confirmation of that. Uh, there is no doubt that England want to win this match and win it in the, in the way that they think that they can best do that, which is to uh, play very much to the forwards and not make any mistakes. Obviously, it doesn't uh, conduce to, to being a very attractive game, but possibly winning today will be the most important thing. And 40 minutes to go then with England ahead against the All Blacks. And that, of course, the all-important factor, how it's done, but whether or not they can achieve it. A goal which has slipped through the hands of so many sides since that famous day and Prince Alexander Obolensky's two tries of 1936. Let's not forget that factor. Winning is the crucial, the one and only thing that matters to England today and how they do it in a way is of second importance. New Zealand equally determined in this final game of their season and of this particular tour want to intend to go out on the highest possible note but England are just now because without a Stringer. Stringer trying to round Fraser. Dropping inside the New Zealand 22, Robbie Deans with the safe catch under immense pressure. Simpson did not knock that on. The referee allows play to continue deep inside that New Zealand 22. Colclough there, trying to turn the ball, set up the rolling ball and the drive. The weight goes in, the ball back to Youngs. Winterbottom, a metre out. Checks again, England almost on that New Zealand line and are held out by the Black Phalanx. New Zealand's put in as close as that. The front race cave in. Important scrummage this. The referee making sure the two front rows go down correctly. Donald Wayne Smith. Well, kicked it a long way, but it uh, only travelled in field about 10 metres down the touchline. And England have the throw in through their new captain 35 next Saturday Peter Wheeler and you'll see that thumb on the left hand there strapped up with a small fracture of a bone which he kept quiet from New Zealand Young's misjudging that one Hicker Reed comes through Cusworth though picks up dodge for Slemon to chase Deans is back though in a safe bounce behind his own goal line watch for the quick restart Checked though by Woodward and Simpson. Six points to three. Gary Pierce, the Midlander, part of that historic victory, like the six Leicester players in this side, Pierce from Northampton, of course. Hobbs back to Andy Donald. And not a spare place in sight on this great day.
England still just outside that New Zealand 22. Youngs again probing, tying them in. Simpson takes it on. And the drive on from Colclough. Youngs, Cusworth, Woodward, Hare, Slemon. A real chance, can he get outside? Just forced out in the corner as Craig Green and Robbie Deans just kept him out by a whisker. England's nearest to a try, which would have been the first try against New Zealand since 1967 at Twickenham. Craig Green in desperate straits. It rebounds to Wayne Smith and the moment of panic is past. England's turn at the line-out. McGrattan and Pierce. Donald calling the shout from scrum half. Scott, but not a straight throw in. expression of disappointment by this capacity crowd really rang through the stadium still under pressure from England in their own 22 For Robbie Deans well the man who was uh, lauded as the hero of New Zealand rugby in particular of Canterbury in providing the downfall of the British Isles in that provincial game Seems almost like yesterday, back here now as a full international in the place of Alan Hewson. Deflected by Braid. And tidy ball for Donald, leaving it for Mark Shaw. Sleeves rolled up there as ever on this near flank. Almost went unnoticed, Bell Size Park, for a few games, a matter of just a few seasons ago. Can England create from this? Young's fumbles, doesn't knock on. Winterbottom drops it down, picked up by Young's again. Ten metres out in front of the All Blacks post from Bainbridge. Cusworth, the chip through by Woodward for Stringer. Just taken out by Craig Green and the tackle in the corner. And tantalisingly close again. That was really a precision kick from Clive Woodward off his left boot. Stringer took it well, couldn't quite make it. And what stout defence we've seen again from the new boy in the midfield for New Zealand, the second 5'8", Craig Green, at the line-out. Fired away deep into the stand, but only a couple of metres upfield. I wonder uh, why Wheeler doesn't put uh, Bainbridge back to uh, the back of the lineout, where obviously Scott has his work cut out against Mexted. Maybe that little bit of height at the back could give England the platform from which to launch it on the back of the lineout. Well, a chance on England's throw in now. Bainbridge up here. England drive to the line. Still in possession. Bainbridge still has it. The try for England. And Colclough is the man to get up with the ball. Morris Colclough. What a time to score your first try for England. Well, it's the move that England have tried a number of occasions uh, today, but have actually failed in the last moment. That is a tap down from Bainbridge in the line out and the mall moving and working, keeping the ball very, very close to the forwards, showing the type of control that England have had all day, and that is just reward for the hard work they've put in. Does New Zealand form an emergency huddle of conference? Dusty Hare has the conversion attempt. Magnificent. 12 points to three. 11 minutes of this second half played. 
Well, it's not spectacular, but to score this type of try against the New Zealand side really must be creditable as far as England are concerned. Taking the All Blacks on in their own type of game and Maurice Colclough, after what was a little disappointing tour for him in New Zealand, must be absolutely delighted with that try. Well, I recall he was jubilant enough about scoring a try for England against Fiji, but that will pale into insignificance now. His first England score and against New Zealand of all people, 12 points to three. That must have given England all the confidence in the world if they were lacking any anyway. And he's off again, is Colclough. Bit of a mix up with Youngs and Pierce. And watch for the New Zealand comeback now. This has been yet another of the hallmarks of all black rugby. Stung into a reaction of some significance. Mexted, Donald, Fraser chasing past Stringer. Cosworth to the rescue. Dusty Hare getting out of trouble to Stringer. Full back to full back. And a nod of recognition of Dusty Hare's neat footwork that uh, saw him courting disaster and saving the day. But a five metre scrum. So, touching goal, New Zealand's put in. But England uh, in no position to rest on their laurels. And seeing this all black side come back time and again and save their best for the last, notably after the opposition have scored. Mexted. Two men to bring him down. But that they did. The pressure on now, though. Five metres out. Donald standing off, leaving it for Mexted once more. Youngs did the right thing, but the knock-on allows advantage. Mexted again, almost through, but just held those two metres short. Hickory still has it. England swamp, deny... But again comes the all-black pack. Donald can't find a way through either. The pressure on this time. And over the England line, the try is given. And Murray Davy there at the bottom with McGratton. Murray Davy, the replacement, comes up with the ball as the try is awarded. And the hallmark of the New Zealanders once again, showing how quickly they can get back. The drive was elementary, but really it was the fact that they got back into the game uh, so quickly after the English score, really set up by the pace of uh, Bernie Fraser. We saw how Nick Stringer, who was usually a full-back, was left for a little bit of pace, which meant that New Zealand could encamp on the English uh, line. The... Uh, all black halfback Donald then used the short side, and it was the uh, New Zealand forwards up in support and the drive over the line. But really, what stands out is not so much the simplicity of the score, but the fact that the All Blacks remind us once again that they are never ever beaten. Andy Donald varying the play as that pressure mounted and mounted on the England line. First Mexted and Reed, and then five of the pack in a wedge together, eventually got England back on their heels. Robbie Deans with the conversion. Within three points now go New Zealand. And in a sense, it's back to where we were at half-time. A three-point margin, a quarter of an hour gone of the second half. Three minutes plus injury time remain. 12-9, England stay ahead, as they have been since the 18th minute of the first half. And there's still more to come, perhaps. Winterbottom, Wheeler in there. 
Kalkla, superb, but a knock-on allows advantage to be played, but New Zealand offside, a penalty that might seal their fate. And England, one senses, a bit uh, fortunate there because I think it would have been a scrummage ball put in by New Zealand for a knock-on had that not just preceded it. 12-9, and Dusty Hare only about 25 metres out. He's done it. Eleven points for Dusty Hare, with the try by Maurice Colclough to go with it, sees that scoreline with two minutes to go. Pick a read. Mexted. Magnificent. Donald. Wayne Smith. Stu Wilson desperately trying to find Wayne Smith in support and the tension sees Slemon and Wayne Smith just uh, exchanging unpleasantries no matter a minute of injury time has gone the crowd cheer them to the echo the heroes in the white strip Scott Every good England play gets a special cheer, and Scott's leap then, no exception. As John Scott is well prepared to let that ball die because he knows that the minutes are taken away. It's England's put in, they're very comfortable in the scrum as they have been all match. Well, I know that uh, such as Bernard Gadney and Hal Sieber, Peter Cranmer, and other survivors of that epic victory of 1936 are watching this game from the comfort of an armchair and I would love to know the thoughts going through their minds now. The last day, 4th of January 1936 it was, that England, under Bernard Gadney, defeated New Zealand at Twickenham. And now a whisker from doing it again, 59 as Dusty Hare pumps yet another one high into the west stand here and time passes two minutes of injury time played twelve internationals up till today ten New Zealand victories and only two by England one in Auckland, one in 36 but New Zealand still with other ideas Craig Green Five metres out, the follow-up is knocked on. And bear in mind that a try and conversion could still level it. You've not beaten New Zealand till the final whistle's gone. 15-9, it's a six-point margin. Almost three minutes of injury time, a scrummage five metres from England's goal line. Safely from Youngs to Hare, the Leicester pair make no error. The watchword in these dying seconds. Wheeler there with this raised. The final whistle goes and England have done it. An historic triumph, inspired and led by that man, Peter Wheeler. The crowd erupt in sheer joy. A triumph that rolls back the years. Peter Wheeler on his debut as England captain. The last victory over New Zealand at Twickenham 47 years ago. Only the fifth defeat ever of a New Zealand side at their home country in Britain. And a day that will live alongside that last triumph of 1936. 15 points to nine, England beat the All Blacks and every man a hero.